I'm trying to be the best representation of what the come up is. Growing up, I always had a problem with being dark skinned. It's actually crazy that you said you're my darkest moment. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean it like that, bro. <laughs> Don't change nappies. I mean, whoa. Blake, you're calling me out here Yo! on live TV. I'm wow. <laughs> But Yo. I said, you don't change that. Bit. When I grew up, you had to be quiet. You really had to be that person. No, he went to my school. He was my friend, but we weren't really friends. He's yeah. just saying that for the association. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to it. It's the official catch-up podcast with myself, Blake the Champ, and my host, co-host, Jared Smith. There we go. Big shout out to Crocs for powering the podcast and also to Road for all this beautiful, sexy equipment. Today, we have a very special guest on the show. Someone who has really come from nothing and built an incredible platform and an empire for himself. That's what I believe. He's a content creator. He's a YouTuber. He's a podcaster. The list goes on with this guy mm -hmm. and he never stops a very special guest, a very good friend of ours as well. Welcome to the show, Irvay Bukasa. Guys, thank you for having me. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited to be here. But I'm like, I'm, 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 I'm guest, I'm guest, I'm guest, I'm guest, I'm guest. You know, obviously, like, I, I, I've always seen you since I was young. And the fact that I'm on this podcast right now with you, and I was able to do the tour with you as well, is sort of like inspiration. I've seen him at my school probably when I was younger as well. But um, I think more him because he's a social media superstar. No, he's so, the sexy one. Yeah. yeah just, it's, oh, it's okay, 20, bro. 2018, huh? Yeah, 2018. Cosmo, sexiest man on the year. So oh. I get the... Do I get the... <laughs> yeah. I'm giving myself a trumpet there. <laughs> Check yeah. here. Bro, that's actually crazy that you say that now because my journey and your journey are at different places. Mm -hmm. Is I went the route already and to hear it now for me feels not strange, but it's just not something I hear often, whereas you must be flooded with the compliments and the attention yeah. and everything at the moment. Because uh -huh. you, I would say it's the beginning of your prime. Yeah. yeah, no, the beginning of your prime. And for me, I chose to now start living a more quiet life. Yeah. And uh, to hear that for me, it means a lot, bro. I appreciate it. Thank it's you, dope. bro. Thank it's you for inspiring me. <laughs> you inspire me. You're my role model. But here's a question. I was thinking about this. and It, it might be a silly question, but it'd be the kid... If the kid, who, who gave you the nickname? How did it come about? Bro, you know what it is, though? When I sit down and think about it, I don't, I don't remember the moment when I, done, when I chose that name. The kid is obviously a baby goat. So obviously, people think the kid is like a small child, but that's actually not what it was. And I always thought, like, I'm almost there, but I'm not quite there. So that's why I didn't want to go for EB the goat. I went for EB the kid because it just so sounds dope. better. Love and that. Also, it always keeps you in a position where you're humble and you're not, you haven't made it there. Like, you're always striving for more. But do you, do you feel now like you're not pushing EB the kid as a brand name anymore? You stick into Irvay Bukasa? No, not at all. I think like EB, EB the kid is more is more the name I'd like to push because people, okay. um, it's just easier to pronounce, bro. And mm. it's just easier for everyone. Because Irvay, some people say Ervi, I'm African teacher, you just call me Ervier. Yeah. And some people say Irv. So some people can't really pronounce my name. So I think I give them something that's easier off the tongue. Got you. And your name's French, no? Where is Paul Francais? Okay, you got me there. We, Translate we. that in English? Yes, I speak French. Okay. So you're completely, you're fluent in French? No, nah, I'm not fluent. I think my, my French is a little bit less than my Afrikaans. I would say I got French like 50%. Okay. Yeah. I just know, comment ça va? Comment ça va? Comment ça va? Très bien, merci. Oui, bien et toi. Oui, oui, bien et toi. Oui, bien et toi. Oui, that's as far as I got. Uh, bro. Bro. The man. basics, you know? Bro, lucky, no? I'm <laughs> Congolese, that's why. I speak French and my parents gave me a French name. But actually, interesting one. Uh, my name is actually Hervé. Is that how you pronounce Hervé? Hervé. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And most, most people that have my name, it starts with the H-E-R-V-E. -E. But okay. my name is just E-R-V-E. -E. But bro, I want to take us back. You recently joined us on an amazing school tour mm -hmm. called Best mm -hmm. Foot Forward, powered by Crocs, of course. And... You were just so present on the tour, bro. Like, honestly, for me, you are one of my favorite guests because, number one, the conversation. And number two, you genuinely are who you say you are. Mm -hmm. You know, you genuinely are that guy. I gave you a lot of props on the tour because every time at the school, you impressed me more and more. There was even one one school where we asked you on the last minute. Yeah, I remember yeah. that. And you, you came through, no assholes, no questions asked. You were there the next day, sorted, pitched, yeah. did your thing. And I think that that's a beautiful thing is... With the success and the fame, sometimes people can get their nose in the air. Yeah, the yeah. ego can be inflated quite a bit. Mm -hmm. Whereas you definitely not someone that allows the fame and the limelight to take over. Instead, you focus on your work ethic. You stay humble. Where does that come from? 
I think that just comes from I think maybe the person that I am firstly and my mom and I think also being very um like religious for instance also has allowed me to say that because obviously humility is a very big part of my religion and the family that I come from like my parents never allow me to get there myself and also I was staying at home for a long time yeah. so I always knew about humility because my dad wouldn't make sure that I forget it so I think it, it, it it's down to a lot of factors <laughs> like the people that I'm surrounded by my friends my family and also I look at the people within my industry as well I think they keep me humble as well because it's people that have achieved so much more than I have so what what gives me the right to start being egotistic when these people have achieved a lot more than me and they're still humble gotcha. and i there's they, like there's so much more to achieve so not that i'm saying that when i achieve that i should become egotistic but i think like i don't think i'm as big as other people see me and i think that's probably one of the things that i can attribute to me being as successful as i've been in this industry but about the tour though i i also just want to do it for the kids but i feel like kids are the ones that have made me who i am through like when i started out i used to do a lot more i used to do a lot more school school oriented content like things that um i experienced at school however as i sort of like cuz i started in 2020 with tiktok properly 2019 2020 so as i started to step away from school like each year i keep forgetting stuff like I forget all the experiences I had in school. Mm. So it's difficult for me to keep making content about that. So I started making content about the things that I experienced now. So um, yeah, I think it's very important for me to stay in tune with the kids because the kids are, as much as like they seem insignificant to some people, they yeah. are the people that at the end of the day allow you to pay your bills. They are the people that allow you to keep doing what you're doing. Those are the people that show you the most love because kids are just loving people. Obviously you get one or two negative kids, but I think it's important for me to give back to the people that have, supported me and inspired me for so long they're the biggest dreamers you know mm. they're, they're dreaming from a place of they didn't get their chance yet you know yeah. being at school you're always thinking about what's life going to be like mm -hmm, after yeah. this and the things that you want to do and and you have the purest heart also at that age you know yeah. you, you're dreaming big with a pure heart and then you learn about the world also and when you leave it's really it's not that easy it's 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 not like the world is there for us um to all become successful mm, and mm. the world cares about us and so so you learn a lot along the way so you are right is that they drive a lot of the attention and social media and everything that's going on they create the culture yeah that's and, the best way to say and, it. and a child is also not afraid to be a fan yeah i feel like nowadays when you're old and then you see like your favorite influence and the more you're like nah, i don't want to go speak to him he's gonna think like i I, yeah, I, it's true. I'm his fan, you know what yeah. I mean? So, so a, lot of true, people, a lot of people are going to be like shy, but a child mm. will come up to you and be like, oh, hey, the kid, nice to meet you. And they're so excited to take a photo. And I feel like those moments um, like keep me motivated because you realize like, bro, I'm just a guy that's making videos from my room. And now I've inspired someone to be so excited to see me and I bring them so much joy. So I think those type of things always make me want to work harder for myself and also for the kids that look up to me as well. Mm. For sure. We had, uh, we, uh, you were at Ocean View High School with us, correct? Yes, yeah. yes. That was actually the, first the one. furthest drive I ever drove in my life. Oh, that's my hood, bro. That's my hood. But we've got a, a friend of ours is the teacher, is a teacher there and her son goes to Fisher um, High School mm -hmm. and she took a picture with you and put her on her status. Her son saw and he was so upset that she didn't tell him that you were coming to the school because he would have bunked and come and seen you and got a photo with you. He was super upset with his mother. Wow. So that just shows the the impact that you're mm -hmm. having on the youth, bro. It's super mm -hmm. powerful. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying my best, bro. You know what I mean? And I think there's a lot of people on social media that push fake narratives to these kids and make them believe that like there's like they're millionaires or they're making so much money. And I think like I'm trying to be the best representation of what the come up is because mm. there's negatives, there's positives. People mm. have seen me in my room to see me in an apartment. People have seen me in cars that have broke down to cars that actually worked. You know yeah. what I mean? So I think uh, the fact that I have so much impact on a child that even he was upset with his mother that she didn't invite him. I think I also have a huge responsibility that comes with that. For yeah. sure. And that's sure. that's something that I'm definitely trying to display. And I'm, I'm not trying to display to the kids that life is just sunshine and those, like I'm trying to show them the struggle as well. Like times when we came up, we didn't have a mic to shoot a video. We shot with a phone as a mic. Yeah. And now we actually have a mic. Do you know what I mean? So I think with all the positives and everything, there is a lot of responsibility. And that's something that I pay more attention to than the success. I got you. And I and I think, I, I'm sorry to put you on the spot all the time, but it's it's one thing that I was thinking now is that obviously, you know, we, we spoke about this. You, a lot of your content is from your own life's experience. So if I had to put it in a question, what is one of the 
hardest struggles that you've ever been through that you overcame and then you made a you made a, a, a film about it or a podcast or content what is one of the darkest moments that you've been through that you rose above uh i think growing up i always had a problem being dark skin okay so it's actually crazy that you said you're my darkest moment <laughs> <laughs> sorry i didn't mean it like that bro no pun intended but um yeah i always had i always had a struggle with my skin color and like i said like now when i'm on social media i, I just I just brush it off. Yeah. However, when I was growing up, it's probably one of the things that was the most challenging. Like always being the darkest person in the group, you always feel like when the switch of the light at school, people's like, where's Irve? Uh. You know, those type of things. <laughs> <laughs> why, why? <laughs> oh no. Do you know what I mean? Like that was probably the one of the most challenging things. And I think I've been able to, I wouldn't say use it to my advantage, but I think it's prepared me for the career oh, field cool. that I'm in. Mean, Cause oh, I've yeah. had so much negativity thrown at me growing up that now when I step into the social media world where people are throwing all this negativity to you, I've heard it all before, so there's nothing new for me. So I think that's the biggest um, challenge or thing that has happened to me in life that I've been able to change into something positive. I love that. I love that you're able to sort of act as, I don't know what I would call it, but you, you like to switch things up, you know, yeah, when sure. negativity is given to you, mm. you like to transform it into positivity and yeah. see how you can make work out of this thing to bring light into the world. Yeah, shout out, shout out, guys. I just try to do my best when it comes to that, yeah. I uh, like what you said earlier on also about success and that success is actually not a destination and it won't be a destination. Mm -hmm. It's actually the journey mm -hmm. because the come up is important. The come up is when you're enjoying yourself the most because you must love what you do. Definitely. Otherwise, you wouldn't be doing it, especially mm. a career like this. People think it's easy because they see the end result. They see the numbers on, on social media. They see the attention. They see the brand deals. It looks cool. Yeah. But nobody knows behind the scenes sure, how much work goes into that bro, and how much of yourself you sacrifice because you can't live a normal life. That's where I found myself is yeah. you miss a lot of birthday parties. You miss a lot of special moments in people's lives. You can't just decide to go overseas with your family or go on holiday somewhere. or you know, You can't just do, I would say, like normal things yeah. because you're on a constant hamster wheel. And you need to keep feeding that machine if you want to see progress mm -hmm. all the time. So you sacrifice quite a bit. Yeah, I think I think for me, definitely. And my girlfriend always tells me, now you must take a break, you must take a break. But it's so hard for me to take a break mm -hmm. because I always want to create content. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And even when we, if we go on a vacation now, we're going to create content. So I haven't had a moment where I've actually been able to shut down. But I think at the same time, it's what keeps me going because mm -hmm. content is something that I do love and creating is something that I do love. So I, I do wish I had an editor that followed me around though. I wish like I had a cameraman and an editor that followed me and I just could speak and then he goes home. It's and coming, edited, bro. Don't worry, edit, it's coming. Edited, Man so, manifested. Yeah, maybe it's coming. one of the gentlemen behind the camera can help me with that. <laughs> <laughs> I have a question for you though and I know, Jared, you're going to feel me on this one. When you're filming so much content, when mm -hmm. you have to do all of this, do you sometimes feel like you're not present in the moment? In the actual moment of the of the of life or... Let's, in, in, in the sense of the shoot. Give you, I'll give you a scenario. You go away. You, your lady, your daughter. Mm. You're on a holiday. It's a getaway. You guys want to enjoy the holiday. You want to enjoy. There's a lot to see. Because you're at the resort now. But you end up filming quite a bit of content. Yes, there's a balance of. But don't you find that you don't truly get to be present. Like literally put your phone away. Sure. Be there. Do you ever feel that you miss that? Or you're missing out on that? Do you know what it is? I feel like I've become like very phone dependent. Okay. Regardless mm. of where I am, and I'm always just. I know da, 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 da. good rehab. Even huh? when there's, <laughs> <laughs> even even when there's nothing to actually look on, on my phone, yeah. and it's and it's a terrible trait. It's a terrible trait to have. And my girlfriend always tells I me. I can like, relate to that, bro. My girlfriend always tells me this guy can never live without his phone. But to answer your question about the resort, I think with us, whenever we go away to somewhere, and let's say for instance we vlogging, like a vlog takes a few seconds, you get three seconds, you have four seconds, five seconds. So I think with that, I never feel not present. Mm. But I do think in life, I don't feel present. Tell and, us more. And in in that, by that I mean like everything's happening so fast, bro. And I can't comprehend that I was just the other day I was in school. I wasn't everyone's favorite person on school because I, I I wasn't the coolest guy on school. Mm. And now people that I went to school with will be like, yo, he went to my school, he was my friend, but we weren't really friends. He's yeah. just saying that for the association. <laughs> like Skepta has this bar where he says like, um, um, stop telling man you're my cousin because in the UK, whenever someone became popular, they're like, nah, that guy's my cousin. cousin. And I think that is something that people always say. Uh, people always say they're friends or they're cousins. But um, yeah, I think it's very surreal for me the fact that Things are happening so fast, bro. But at the same time, things are not. They just feel like they're happening so fast. Because mm. I started this journey four years ago. Well, it's 2024 now, no? So yeah. five years ago, essentially. 
So it feels like things are happening so fast that I'm not able to realize how far I've come. Mm. Like when I go home and I have my own spot, like last year I was just staying with my parents. Like that hasn't sat in and that hasn't like clicked with me yet. And it just feels like I have this imposter syndrome like syndrome that I can't believe that this is actually me. Yeah, so I think true. I'm not present in that sense as much as I am present in my life and I understand what's happening. It's very difficult to comprehend at times. You're on the MC wheel. Yeah, essentially. I and, I, and I don't know at which point I'm going to be able to be like, yo, this is actually it. But um, yeah, I'm just taking it as it comes now. Bro, in the career that we chose, the hamster wheel is a part of it. Mm-hmm. You, you, you can't have it if you're not willing to run on that hamster wheel. There's always a cost to, to something, eh? Definitely. You yeah. must put something down if you want something out, you know, at the end of the day. What is your diet actually at the moment? Because at the moment, we all see <laughs> boiled eggs online. Do you know what it is, no? A lot of people have a lot of negative things to say about my my, my choice of a of like what I choose to have with my eggs, bro. Mm. I had eggs with crepes, bro. Yeah, so do, do you guys think that's crazy? Not really. Not really, yeah. Because I feel like eggs and crepes is sort of similar to eating chicken and like lettuce or it's it's all like one is a one is a fruit Fresh. and a fruit and a veg and one is a oh. is obviously like from the chicken. And um I, I really enjoy I really enjoy boiled eggs, you know what I mean? Because mm. I feel a lot better. Mm. Yeah. And I listen to I don't know if you guys know Eddie from the UK. He's a big advocate for eggs. Um he's one of the biggest blowing up con- um, content I eat creators. five eggs every morning, but fried eggs. Oh, he's so a content creator. Yeah. He's okay. a content creator and he eats eggs in all, all sorts. Like he eats eggs at six o'clock because he's first meal is six o'clock because he does intermittent fasting. So me, I eat eggs like three times a day because right. I feel like I don't feel hungry anymore. Mm. Like I can wake up right now. I didn't have breakfast and I don't feel hungry until like what? Three o'clock? Yeah. Because the eggs like has every single vitamin in it except mm. one. I'm not sure which one it doesn't have, but mm. it doesn't have But one. here's the question. So because my wife does this. She likes, so if she's got three different things of food on a plate, she likes to put all of the things on a fork and put it in her mouth together. She, she says it tastes better. So when you eat your eggs and grapes, is it together or is it a bit of egg and a bit of grape? Yeah, that's an interesting one. That's eh? interesting. I don't one, pay eh? attention. But <laughs> I think I think a bit of both is good though. But not the not the yellow though. When I when I eat the yellow, I eat the yellow on its own. Uh, okay. Because the like yellow the, got the other texture. Yeah. So the white and the well, the white and the grapes definitely. But I also had uh, eggs and ice cream and people were getting on to me. But that hey, was also got, ju- that was just a troll. You that, got me you got me on that one, yeah. That was a that's troll. That's about the That was a troll. That was a troll. I was just <laughs> trolling because I know every time like I got like three, four hundred messages just because of that. Mm. So I think for me it's just like Sometimes I do things on social media just to be funny, bro. Yeah, but that's cool, though. That's, that's what you. I'm known for. Do you yeah. know what I mean? You must spark conversation at the yeah. end of the day. That's yeah, it. definitely. And you do that really well. Mm-hmm. Talking about that, though, I actually want to ask you a question as a content creator because creating content is not actually easy, especially coming up with new content. But I did see that you have a qualification in journalism. No, 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 not, no, no. It's not, what's in sports. St- in sports. In sports. Okay. But I wanted to study journalism. Okay, so that's yes. where it comes from. Yes, yes, okay. yes. I definitely wanted to study journalism, but I thought to myself, um, I feel like in life, you know, there's people that study to do something and don't do it, but there's people that don't even study, but just do it. Like most of our, I think most of our parents, um, especially like black parents, colored parents, most of them are in jobs now, which they didn't study for because they weren't able to study back then. But they have good jobs. They have good earning jobs. And I feel like it's the same with um, not most of them, I just mean like mm, obviously the ones sure, that yeah. are earning well. I yeah. um, have jobs which they didn't really study for and they eventually studied for it while they were already working there. For sure. So some, gotcha. some some people are teachers and they have no qualifications, but then they get the qualification while they've already been teaching for like 10 years. So I think for me, I thought to myself, bro, I'm going to go to uni now for four years. I'm going to spend close to 100, maybe two, at, at that time at least. It yeah. was, now it's 100,000 and a year for uni. But at that time, it was like 30 grand a year to get into UWC. I didn't get in But I thought to myself, I'm not going to go another year to go back to school and try and get a better maths mark because maths, I got 49%, so it didn't allow me to make it. Um, I thought to myself, instead of wasting that time, I can invest that four years in just getting better in my craft. Because most of the people that are coming out of journalism now, four years after school, they are starting at where I started at four years ago. Yeah. Yeah. They are only getting into the industry after they got the qualification. But I learned while I was already in the industry. For sure. So I think for me, I... I think I'm pretty good at what I do. Mm. I would say I think some people might agree. I I obviously don't have the fundamentals as much as they do because yeah. they obviously studied my book. But I think uh, journalism is something that I always had a passion for, and it's so and it's so weird for me because I have this I have this page at home where I write everything yeah. um, that I want to do every single at the start of every single year. So 2018, 
I was a footballer at the time. I wanted to play football because mm. that was my initial goal in life. And now, 2018 was my last year of school. And on that page, I wrote that I want to have a podcast. And it's so weird because I had no knowledge of podcasts back then and mm. I had no knowledge of journalism and I had no aspiration. I think my aspirations of journalism only came at the end of 2018 when I was forced to make a choice about what I want to do. But it's, 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 kind of, it's kind of a surreal moment for me when I read that page because what I used to write on that page was like, um, what type of wife you want to have, what type of um, car you want to drive one day, what type of job you want to have one day. And it's such a surreal thing for me to think back then that I have had any, because like podcasts back then were not even a thing, especially yeah. in South Africa. So yeah. I don't know what made me write that, but I wrote that down and I looked at it like last year and I was like, wow, I actually have a podcast and I wrote this down because the 2018 page obviously falls down the list because you got my 2019, 2020. Yeah. And eventually I found that page and I was like, yo, I actually wrote this in 2018 and it's, it's kind of insane. But that I think way. I think the crazy part about what you're saying, and I can relate to that, is that if I look at my journey in life, you know, um, I became an international motivational speaker and a, and a life coach and whatever, you know, for, a life skills facilitator. But I didn't study anything. Mm -hmm. I did it first. And once I'd been doing it for a long time, I then started studying. Yes, to sharpen up your work, yeah. For sure. Uh -huh. So it's almost like I've, I, I believe, and I know you guys all agree, we've got these gifts that we're born with that actually you don't, you're not gonna find through studying. Mm -hmm. it, it comes out if you're allowed to be developed. The studying is just the cherry on top that help, helps you sharpen the skill. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And I think that's also that's also very similar to a footballer that plays in an academy from the age of four. And then you get some footballers that only get into football at 18, 19, and they already naturally talented in the sport. So I think like there's no correct route, but some people are just better at going straight into something instead of actually studying it or going to learn how, to, or being taught how to do it because they naturally have the gift. 100%. We, we live in a time now where you get the qualification, but the qualification doesn't make you qualified. Mm -hmm. It's that experience yeah, that sure. you can actually share because I would rather hire somebody that is experienced in something than someone who come to me with a piece of paper fresh out. Yeah, You know what I'm saying? Is There's work to do and with that work comes a whole lot of other things that you can't study for at mm. all. So the life experience sells more, you know? Yeah, and, that's a, and that's what they say. Sorry, man. That's what they say. Uh, my brother-in-law used to work on the ambulances and he said, if you ever in a car accident, he said the first hospital you want to go to is Skier or False Bay, government hospital. I said, are you mad? Why? Mm. He says, because those people are dealing with trauma, surgery all the time and the experience mm. is what makes them great. Do you, do you know, that's actually an interesting topic that you that you, that you mentioned. Um, when, I, when my girlfriend was pregnant, I know you're probably going to get into that eventually. Yeah. But when my girlfriend was pregnant, um, I spoke to my mom. Mom's a nurse and my dad's a doctor. Okay. So both my parents on the medical field. And we were thinking about going to a certain, um, going to a certain hospital that was like semi-private, mm. semi-public. And at that time, I was like, yo, it's, 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 it's going to cost us like 30,000 30, rand, which is calm. I can say for that. We mm. can do that. But my mom was like, no, she was like, no, don't do that. I'd rather go to a um, a public institution where they do, because the nurses are doing it every single day. Yeah. yeah. And at these private places, they only do it when someone's paying the big bucks, you know what I mean? And For sure. Someone, and I also spoke to my friend Fish Parcel as well. He's a doctor as well and a DJ. Yeah. So he gave me the same advice. Like these people are dealing with these issues every single day and they have the experience. And I think that also relates to your point about the experience. Like people who are constantly doing something will always be better than someone who has a higher qualification, but mm. is not actually in the field and in the training of doing something. 100%. Mm -hmm. Their hands are warm. It's just tough though. Like in the past, I'd say 10 to 13 years now for me, I've actually gone to study different things. Strategic brand and marketing, PCOM degree, all of those things. And I studied my PCOM degree twice. Both times I didn't finish because I realized what it is that I do. Mm -hmm. I go and look for information that I need to use in my own life. And then when I have it, then I'm not interested anymore. Yeah. That's actually what it is. I'm not lazy. I'm, I'm not stupid. I can study. I can pass. I can do my thing. I get through the whole thing. But I'm actually just upskilling myself because I know once I have the skills, then I can lead the right people and I can bring us more opportunities. That's mm -hmm. all that it is. And if you're not learning for that reason, then you're actually learning so you can look good in front of other people. Because then you've fallen for the trap yeah. that you need that piece of paper to look quiet and feel quiet and impress your parents. But your parents don't go to work with you, bro. Yeah. At the end of the day, they, they're not going to interfere with your pay. They can't negotiate. No, I sent my son to university or my daughter. Uh, give me you this. need to have more than this. It's not going to happen. So when, you, when you're educating yourself, when you're upskilling yourself, I feel like 
you can understand the investment and you can understand what your return on investment should be when you're putting in that work. Yeah, exactly. And it's and it's it's a very it's very it's a very challenging. I think people leaving school right now are probably in the most challenging position yeah, for ever. Sure, yeah. dude. Because you're I've got friends that have got five, and I wouldn't say five, maybe three or four degrees now, because um, obviously they just done their honors or their masters this year, and they can't seem to find a job. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Or they're overqualified. Or there's so much challenges you have to face because now you have to decide, am I going to go straight into it and just do it myself? Or am I going to go study and waste, not waste money, but essentially put so much money into this and I could not get the job regardless. Yeah. So people that are leaving school have a very difficult choice to make and I'm just glad I'm not in that position because 100%. you don't know what the right choice is and you just have to trust for sure. What I do promote is education, mm -hmm. 100%. Because we know knowledge is power. And the only reason the three of us are sitting here today, who we are as people, is because we educated ourselves. Yeah. Because we learn something that other people don't know and we have something to share. You can't share if your cup is not full. Yeah. So educating yourself doesn't just mean studying, writing exams. Educating yourself is understanding that the cycle of life to learning never ends. It's yeah. a constant, ongoing process. And I think that's something that you speak about a lot, is that your content that you make is all based on your life experience. Yes. Mm. So, yes. So, so, so your experience in life is what brings you most of your education, which you then share with the world. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And, th and, that's, and I think that's why you are where you are right now. And that's exactly what B Blake's saying. And I think that's, that's the most beautiful thing about having a winning mindset is that if you can take every experience in your life and extract the lessons, you're going to be constantly evolving and educating yourself and not needing to necessarily go to university and spend money to get a degree in something you can learn from life itself. Yeah, and I, I think that's, that's, that's a big thing for me, especially like my content does come from the experiences I have in life. Like I shared a, a video recently about my experience with a um, traffic officer. And obviously some people are saying this is not true, it only happens in the United States. But obviously that was my experience. And the fact that I, I experienced something negative I was able to put it out in a positive light and yeah. get something from it. Because yeah. obviously, as much as the experience was negative, when I took the experience and I made it a video online, people were laughing at it. Obviously, some people took it a bit seriously, yeah. which guys, when I post videos about my traumatic experiences, it's to be seen in a positive way <laughs> and not for you guys to tell me, oh, I'm sorry that, that happened to you. I mean, I, I appreciate the sympathy, yeah. but I'm putting it out so that you guys can understand what's happening and raise awareness for someone else experiencing the same thing. Yeah, for sure. But at the same time, also bringing guys a laugh because obviously the way it's shot is over dramatic and it's shot in a way in which it's comedic and not to be serious. Mm. For sure. So I think definitely um, my content and the things that I learn in life has allowed me, the things that I learn in life has allowed me to able to elevate my content because if I don't have these life experiences, I'm not able to create this content. But I think one thing that popped into my mind now, it's, it's unscripted, but how do you deal and do you experience uh, haters in, in terms of your DMs, your comments? And how do, you, how do you deal with that? How do you approach that? What's your view on that? Because it's a yeah. big thing, hey, for social media. Yeah, it is, it is a big thing. And I think when I started out, um, there was a lot of hate which I had to get used to. Mm. And eventually that, that's just the first, the first layer. The first layer of like stepping out and people are going to have negative things to mm. say. Because obviously I have an accent that is... A Capetonian accent, which is associated with a lot of colored people. Yeah. But I'm a black guy from Congo. Yeah. So I think that was obviously new to people. And they were like, who's this you? Brother? He's mm. trying to fake it. He's trying to be different. And I, and I always just ignored comments. And I always tell my girlfriend this because my girlfriend's a lot more sensitive than I am. And when she sees a comment, she always wants to respond to it. Mm. And that <laughs> obviously, like for instance, we spoke about someone um, that was obviously sending me hate after a certain podcast. And me engaging with that person will just feel exactly what they want. For yeah. sure. Because people do something to get a reaction out of it. Like if you give a clown a circus, he's going to perform. Of course. Do you know what I mean? like if you don't give Love him that, that space to perform, if you just ignore him, it's like you tell me today, um, Hervé, you have a big head. And I'm like, true? And then af after afterwards, what are you going to say? What yeah. can you say after that? So I think for me, I do experience a lot of hate. How I deal with the hate initially was just ignoring it. But I think now, as I've sort of like grown... I think I'm struggling a lot more. Mm. I do think I'm struggling to ignore it now because you deal with so much and you just push it aside and push it aside and yeah. push it aside. And I think for me now, I feel a sense to want to respond to things now a lot more. I don't know if it's maybe because I'm, I've become a father and I'm more protective now. Mm. I don't know if it's maybe because I have become bigger in the social media world so my ego might have been 
might have been inflated a bit. Like I can't seem to put my finger on what it is, but I have picked up that I want to respond to things more. I want to defend myself more because a thousand people saying negative things about you, a thousand people saying whatever they want about you yeah. over a long period of time does that to you, I would think, because you can only ignore something for so long. Yeah, I can relate to this though. We can speak on this topic, bro. You also never had anything to lose when you started out. Mm. Now you have something to lose, Definitely. which makes it different. It's of value to you now. Yeah. I went through the same thing. You are a human being at the end of the day. And through this whole process, ne, becoming famous, becoming successful, all of that, I had my taste of all of it. What I realized is you sometimes get lost in it all. Yeah. You're on a hamster wheel and you forget that you're a human being. Yeah, for sure. So you let go of your peace along the way. That's what I was doing slowly but surely. I was willing to trade my peace for a little bit more success, for yeah. a little bit more fame, for being in, in, in a circle of people, growing my network a little bit more. Yeah. I was willing to sacrifice my peace until one day <laughs> COVID came, COVID hit, and everybody had to stand still and take a look at their life. And yeah. I used that opportunity and I said, you know what? I'm not sacrificing my peace any longer because people's opinions is actually coming from them, sitting as cowards behind their phone. You don't even have to know key, them. Keyboard warriors. Yeah. Yeah or trolls or whatever. Yeah, people start fake accounts and they literally say the most hateful things and you on the receiving end. So all they're doing is they're just giving off this negativity yeah. mm -hmm. and you're doing your job, scrolling through your comments, trying to grow your brand, brand, doing a positive thing, but you are internalizing all of this, as you said, and it builds up and builds up and builds up and you can explode, bro. Mm. So before I exploded, I decided, you know what, this is coming out in a hateful way because where I come from, I just want to explain this. When we were growing up, no? You couldn't pretend to be someone else. Mm. In this time now, I can start a profile tomorrow on social media and pretend I can borrow cars. I can post about this house and that house. I can Airbnb. You can borrow my photos. 100%. You know what I'm saying? Photoshop that, quick yeah. fast. AI can do it for me. I can be a motivational speaker in two days and never ever lived a, a, an experience in my life where I accomplished anything. Mm -hmm. That's the world we live in today. When I grew up, you had to be quiet. You really had to be that person because this was your social media, bro. Yeah. You were that person. So true, bro. So that's the, the, the tough thing is to cross over from that because back in the day, you say something nasty about someone, you get smacked. Yeah. Like, in real <laughs> straight life. Straight up. It's, and that's where it ends. We see who is the better person and the life goes on after that. Mm. Not promoting violence, but you know what I'm saying? Is yeah. It's dealt with there, then and there, yeah. and you carry on with your life. I think I think also for me, the biggest thing for me is also when someone assassinates your character. Because mm. I think, um, like, I'm okay with you saying something about how I look, but like, even the color of my skin, like, I'm not even faced by that because that's things we grew up with. And I think growing up, I was teased about that. So yeah. it's things that you sort of like, obviously, you're not supposed to get used to it, but it's not, it's not, you have, it's not nothing you haven't heard before. For sure. So I'm like, that's cool. But I think when it comes to assassinating my character, like, I deal with, um, with a lot of like internal battle, like, whether I should respond or should not respond. Like, for instance, um, I recently done an interview with a guy named Rydal. And he's obviously a part of the forex industry and he was able to educate me about the forex industry and before that you know my opinion on that yeah so my opinion was very very negative towards the forex trade because i thought oh everyone I is remember. obviously scamming people but he taught me that not everyone is scamming people like this forex traders that are making as much as teachers yeah and are living month to month and being able to make money from that Absolutely. and i learned and i educated myself because of that and after that i decided to like okay now that i know about it or i at least know that things are not a scam, mm. I can now promote some some industries, I mean, some brokers or some forex traders that are legit. Yeah. For sure. So I decided to step out and do that. And then people, some individuals in my comment, uh, who I don't think they engage enough in my content to obviously see that I took the time out to educate myself, yeah. was saying, oh, you had so much negative things to say, mm. but um, now you're promoting them. And obviously that makes me seem like I'm I'm selling out, like I'm just doing whatever for money. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But they ignore and neglect the fact that I took the time out to educate myself because it just didn't it didn't just come from that one podcast. Mm. It came from all the things that I learned prior to that as well. Yeah. To teach myself about him before I could interview for him sure. as well. For so sure. I think like that's where I battle with it the most. I battle with it the most when someone's trying to say something about myself as a person. Yeah. Yeah. Because I'm not someone that's gonna mislead my followers into something that's gonna make them purposely lose money. Yeah, For sure. Obviously, um, as long as you're letting people know about the risks when you promote something like that, it's important to do those type of things. And yeah, I think I think when someone starts to assassinate my character, that's something that's something I struggle with even in real life. So what's the so if I had to if I had to ask you um on the spot, what is probably the worst comment that you've ever received and had to deal with in your career? In my career? 
So, 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 <laughs> does, so does one stand out? Like someone said something and I was like, yo, this is a bit, this is taking it too far. Yeah, I can't even, I think, I think there was some, something that someone said about my daughter like a few, a few, a few weeks ago. Hectic. And like that, that probably stood out to me because obviously this is, this is someone that you're very protective over. And I don't think, I don't think they said something directly, but they just said something about like, for instance, my girl, we made a video where my girlfriend was holding my daughter and someone just said like, yo, this father never holds a child. But obviously you seeing a video that's mm. like mm. 30 seconds, bro. Yeah. How do you know mm. what happens behind the scenes? Yeah. So I think, um, those comments are probably standing out a lot because those are things that are actually also affecting me because essentially it's assassinating my character as well. It's yeah. making me look like, oh, I don't care yeah. about my child. Do you know what I mean? So sure. I think um, just, yeah, just people assassinating my character. And I use that phrase a lot, but, yeah. but it's that's cool. a but big it's, thing yeah. for me. That's for, a big it's thing real for me. For, you, yeah. for sure. Yeah. And I think, I think a lot of people today uh, that are pursuing the same craft that you are pursuing and even young kids, I think the the bullying and the uh, teasing on social media mm. is so intense. Mm. I mean, we have people taking their own lives because of people's comments yeah. and what they're saying about people's character, and it's it's crazy. We we we've actually lost the respect for another human yeah. and the value of life, yeah. and we're willing to say the maddest, I'm not going to swear, yeah. stuff to people. But we don't even know them exactly. personally, and exactly. I don't know how we are going to overcome it. But it's something that we got to educate the next generation to overcome, bro, and deal with in a healthy way. I think I know what the solution is, though. I know man can can scream it loud enough for everybody to get it. But control tell me, delete. tell me what you think about this. I think love is the solution. Mm -hmm. Is that along the way we've really lost the understanding of what it is to love someone yeah. and to be loved and to to actually be better at it, to grow in it. You know, is Nowadays, if you're in a toxic relationship, it is what it is yeah. until it don't work anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, no one is going, let me do some research. Let me see how I can be better. Let me maybe change a few things about what I'm doing. You know, yeah. how do I become better at loving, at producing love? Because that's actually all of our superpower mm -hmm. is that you can produce love. You can go through today and you can say hello to everybody that you come across. If you know them, if you don't know them for the yeah. day, have a smile on your face. You never know what someone else was going through in that day. You can yeah. change it for them. Yeah. We have that power. And of course, the opposite. But I think that the, the solution is love. And that if people really were more intentional about loving more, mm -hmm. caring yeah. more, we would definitely see a difference. Bro. Because then then I wouldn't be so quick to throw out a negative comment. You know, yeah. Then I would be considerate of, this is this bro's daughter, my bro. Why would I say anything negative mm -hmm. about her? She, the she, child. Exactly. She, she doesn't even have a life yet. You know, she, she only deserves the best. So I think love is the solution, bro. And we have the power to push that through our content. But you also say, and you've said this before, uh, imagine a life without social media. Yeah. We've had this conversation before. Yeah. Like obviously you're a content creator, so it does help with your income and stuff and it does make people laugh and yeah. there is a positive side to it. But there's also a dark side of it. Definitely. Like like, what would a life without social media look like? Yeah, I, 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 can't, I can't imagine that right now because obviously, like you said, this is my bread and butter. For sure. But I think on, Blake, on what Blake mentions about love, I think people are more concerned about having a bit of fun than actually showing love to the next person. Sure. Yeah. Because I would rather have a comment um, where I'm dissing you and everyone laughs about it yeah. than to show you some love because that one goes under the radar because the negativity will always stand out. Yeah, yeah. Unfortunately. Cloud, cloud tokens, bro. Yeah. that's it. And I feel like people always look at the negative before they look at the positive, like whether it's the YouTubers, well, they know when they make more controversial content, people are going to engage. <laughs> when I know I have, a, I have a very controversial guest on my podcast, I know it's going to get over 20,000 views. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So... I think with everything, it's, 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 people are more concerned about money mm. and fun than they are concerned about actually showing love to the next person because I sort of, in a weird way, I understand it, but mm. I also don't support it. Yeah, yeah for sure. Because people, in the money aspect, when, you, when you're trying to have a, a bit of fun with mm. people, like say, calling them rude words, like people use crazy words on me sometimes on social media, yeah. but those don't really affect me. Like I don't, I don't really get affected by racial slurs yeah. and things like yeah. that because... I, I, I don't know. I'm just used to it over such a long time, even though, like I said, it's not something you should get used to. You got but thick I, skin. Yeah, you yeah. get used to it after, <laughs> after a while, like from primary school getting bullied and as you get older, you just... But do you get used to it? Now, we, now we're just saying that because that's like a cliche thing, but do you get used to it? Because earlier we were saying you get used to it, but you brush it aside and it builds up. But I think, that, I think, I think for me, that's what I brush aside is things that assassinate my character. Okay. Mm. But I think in terms of like when someone calls me rude words i just push it 
like yeah. I, like bounces I, off you. Yeah, like that's just normal. Like these people like that in the world, and you just accept it. Even <laughs> though, like I say, we shouldn't. It is what it is, and it, I, I think like we can push as much love as possible. But I I do believe that there's always going to be someone trying to do something or say something negative about you. I'm the same. I'm I'm actually honestly I relate to you on everything that you've said with people assassinating my character. And when people say things about me that's not you, true, it doesn't affect me. The reason is we know who we are. Yeah. You grow to know who you are. Mm-hmm. And obviously it's a journey in life. You're still learning more about yourself. But I know who I am. So the things that are absolutely unreasonable, I'm like, oh, please, yeah. don't waste my time. And then when you say things about my character, that's the opposite of what I'm putting work into mm-hmm. intentionally. That's when I get upset because you've put it in a public place. And here I am working in the dark to make sure I'm good in this mm. area of my life. Mm. So, of course, it's going to sting, bro, because it's it's the complete opposite of what you are intentional about from the best place in your heart. But I think it's like what we all agree upon is that how do we learn to be more responsive than reactive in those moments? Mm-hmm. Yeah. We're humans with feelings, yeah. and we can't deny the feelings, mm-hmm. but how do, we, how do we in that moment feel the feelings but then respond rather than react because – Guess what? We're all parents here. Yeah. We've yep. got kids that are going to look up to us, our own kids. So we've got to try and be a good role model towards them. And that's not an easy task. That's, that's, that's yeah. super difficult, super challenging because we have our own tr- struggles, our own character defects, our own flaws that we are constantly working through. Yeah. So I think, yeah, that's, that's such a challenging one. And I, and I wanted to ask you, you know, we're talking about love. You've, been on, you've got your own podcast. You've been on many podcasts. you out there. Um, what... What could you share with us today that you probably never shared on a podcast before? Because we want to make this unique. We want to make yeah. this different. We want yeah. you to show us some love. Yeah, it's a tricky one. No? It's fun. Can I give you some time to think about that one? Because yeah. I just want to scroll back. We can't move back past the fact that you just said we're all parents, my bro. I think that, that's, a pretty, <laughs> that's, that's a pretty big deal. Yeah. And that's pretty fresh for you as yeah. well as for me, bro. Um, your your daughter is now four months. Yeah, four months old. Yeah, four months old. And man to man, how's fatherhood, brother? Bro, fatherhood is is busy. I'm a busy man. I turned into a busy man. I wasn't a busy man last year. Yeah, <laughs> but this year it, it's busy. I think I think like I like I told you guys off cam. I think I'm not as busy as I should be. Mm. I wouldn't say as, as I should be, but I'm not as busy as my girlfriend is at least. Because obviously, as the mother, you the nurturer, yeah. and the baby wants to be with a milk machine, mm-hmm. as um, <laughs> so many mothers like to refer to it as. Yeah. Um, so I think for me, like it, it, it takes a toll on you. It doesn't take a toll on you, but it sort of like makes you think different mentally. Yeah. However, in the physical, I haven't been able to fully experience it yet because I think like mentally, you have to become responsible for not only the child but also for the mother now. And I feel like as a man, that sort of like within you, regardless mm. of whether you guys are married yet or not married yeah. yet. Um, you just feel the sense of responsibility for both of them. And the way you think becomes a lot more different because now I can't go and just buy me a new pair of Jordans. I have to think to myself, yo, before I buy this pair of Jordans, nappies. does my daughter got nappies? Yeah. Does my daughter got this? <laughs> like, if my daughter needs to go for an injection today, yeah. do I have the money to um, provide for that? So I think it's changed a lot mentally, mm. but in the physical, it's yet to change for me because obviously my lovely girlfriend has been doing most of the work in that sense. Obviously I try and help her in terms of the bar thing and all those type of things. However, um, the child just wants to be with her most of the time. Do you know what I mean? So for me, physically, not so much changes, but mentally. It's so important. I feel to have a supportive role like that, especially in the work that you do. And how do you find the dynamic of you guys having a public relationship and having a daughter and you doing this like on your heart and in your mind, where are you at with that? Bro, do you know what it is? Like, I think when I started dating my girlfriend, first and foremost, um, shout out to Jessica. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Drum roll. <laughs> I always wanted to have a private relationship. And sometimes I do feel, still feel that way. However, at the same time, I think like with the positivity, we experience so much more. Mm. And with the public, with being public, there's been so much positive that we received. Like people being more supportive to our relationship and I think she's also grown a lot in her career and been able to now get an income from that. Like if I kept yeah. it private all the time, I don't think she would be able to step out into this light and become this person. Because now, especially now, she just graduated now. She's about to graduate in April actually, but she just finished uni. Nice. And being a mother now, it's easier now to stay at home, look after your daughter, and at the same time, work on your own time, like in the influencer career, being able to do campaigns, being able to do things like that, and still generate the income than to have to leave your daughter after six months Mm. and go straight into a job which you studied for. So I think there's been positives in that aspect because now she's not forced 
to have to um, just go straight into a job. Like she can go if she'd like to. Yeah. But um, yeah, I think I think that has it's helped us in a lot of ways. And we do still deal with challenges like people obviously struggling to comprehend that we are interracial, interracial um, couple. The fact that she's a lot lighter skin, even though she is colored. Yeah. The fact that she is a lot of light skin, um, people think that she's white. Mm. So I think we we still deal with challenges in that aspect. And like I said as well, that she always wants to respond to the comments, to respond to the negativity, and it affects her a lot emotionally. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I think overall it's been a positive experience for us because we've been able to not only generate the income but also grow our personal brands. And it's made our relationship easier because I think our relationship would have been a lot more difficult if she had to go to work mm. and I was the one that had to look after the child. Oh, we had to get a nanny. We'd miss sure. a lot of moments as well. So I think yeah, we have sure. a lot more freedom now as well. Mm. So it works. It, yeah, it works it well. It works a lot better now. And a big shout out to Jessica. I realized I just called her Jessie as a nickname. Yeah, it's, it's gone. It's gone. <laughs> it's, every every I, Jessica yeah. I call Jessie. But, you know, Jessica, big shout out to you because when it comes to the support, sorry, Jared. No, it's cool, bro. I don't think it's just support that she's also showing mm -hmm. is that she was able to adapt to the life that you live. Yeah. Because it can actually cause a lot of trouble. For I'm sure. be very honest. Bro, living in a public eye is not a joke. And especially having a girlfriend you and other know. girls. Yeah. It's not easy, bro, because you know you get all the attention. You know you I, get in I, I, don't, I don't get attention. <laughs> <laughs> not a lot of lies in this podcast. Safe, no lies. Uh, I don't get attention. Safe God. Where's my... <laughs> <laughs> the bro. DMs are a dark place. But when, when your partner adapts, the two of us speak about this a lot, when your partner adapts and they come on board and they understand what it is you're trying to accomplish, sure. it makes you so much more driven and motivated mm -hmm. to do what you do. It's almost like you can level up, bro. Yeah. Women have the superpower. If they care for you and love you enough, you also must start believing even more about yourself. For you sure. get that? So yeah, big shout out to Jessica. I think also, I think for me, and you guys can... Um, testify to this or not uh you step up another level in your adulthood journey when you change a poo nappy 100 percent, bro that makes have you been there yet yeah i've been i've been i've been I've been once I've been. or twice once once once, once. okay once. okay you don't change nappies <laughs> i mean whoa blake you're calling me out here on, on live tv I'm wow <laughs> But Hello. I said you don't change that. Means. I mean, I mean, I do, I do, I do one or two. I'm not um, the most hands-on <laughs> nappy changer. I'm not. Okay, but you have though. Yeah, but I was actually voted nappy changer of the year 2014 for my little brother actually. Okay, but so you, I retired. You've been it. I retired after that. But <laughs> right now, I don't change as many nappies. But I think as as time goes on. I will start. I'll start engaging more yeah. because you know. Actually, my mom just had a, a a little boy as well, so I got a new brother. Okay, he's about he's turning he's turning one next next month next week actually okay. in April. Yeah. So I think um I've also been experiencing it there. So now I'm just catching a breather. You know, my it's another level is, though. Hey? Yeah, it's, it's it's a crazy level. And I did ask you off. I did ask you off camera. Um, so I did ask you p your permission. But uh, you have uh, experienced uh, the taste of breast milk, correct? Breast milk? Nah, not yet. I've also not been there yet, you know? You haven't been there? <laughs> nah, I've not been there yet. I've it's better than, it's better than uh, the milk you buy from Spa, hey? So, like... Uh, like the Sweeter, small, but it's, it's full cream. Don't the nurses call it golden juice? Yeah, golden juice, the yeah. The doctors will call it golden juice because golden there juice. is... Nothing more healthy for a baby than that. Yeah, it's got all the nutrition, bro. No, I'm not the baby. Formula <laughs> but you need the nutrition. No, we're saying it's not like it's not. It's <laughs> no, not yeah, 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 no. You no, could no. actually call it, gain some muscles. Yeah, definitely. Maybe for my new gym diet. It's better than I'm the like, eggs, by the way. Better than eggs? Yeah, better than eggs. More protein. I, I, I might, might have Do to your be research. There. I might have to be there. Oaks actually Sorry, Jessica. Me they're actually making <laughs> me nervous today. No? Sorry, Jessica. <laughs> yeah, no. But bro, I just want to wanna speak to you about um, where you're at at the moment. And where you're looking forward to, because mm. you have a lot going on, and yeah. we know you've accomplished a lot. And like you said, it's difficult for that to set in. Instead, you throw your energy into creating more, planting more seeds. Yeah. But in terms of your goals, sometimes it's difficult to keep pressing forward when you got so much to maintain. Yeah. That's important. You mm -hmm. can actually lose your level of success if you can't maintain what's going on. But in terms of your goals, what do you have on the cards that's next? O off camera now, you, you split a couple of bars for yeah, us. Yeah, that was so, super dope. Yeah, that is a like a secret that you uh -huh. said out there. What what have you got going on that you're looking forward to? Bro, I think you speak about me as a whole. I think as a whole, I, I have a lot of goals that I have for myself. And okay. first and foremost, that's to reach 100k subs on YouTube. We're about 1,500 away. And nice. I think Amazing, that's, that's possible in the next two or three weeks. Um, that's probably my biggest goal right now because I feel like there hasn't been any YouTubers in SA, mm. uh, not, I mean in Cape Town at least, that have got the 100K plaque that do just YouTube, 
not someone doing shorts or someone doing podcasts like someone guys who's, make sure you subscribe please someone has done everything Show the you know love. what i mean shout out bro and that's that's a big thing for me just having that plaque with my name on it just i think that'll allow me to be more present in the moment because i actually mm. get to see what all my hard work has got me Amazing, you know what i mean bro. so that's one thing that i do want that i that i do um want to achieve but also i'm doing a lot more shows now we're starting this new platform actually called fly z day mm. and um what we want to do with this platform is basically give a space for people to come on they have their own shows there so we've got a football show that i recently started with terran boys and shout out terran nice um we also have a freestyle show that we're gonna have for rappers mm. for rappers can come on the drop of Blake's, freestyle. Blake's definitely coming. Blake's coming. I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll want him to be first. I, I'll make a deal with you though. Uh-huh. When things pick up for you, I'll make one song with you, one music video, just for fun. You're going to dance? Two of us, 100%. Wow. I'll, I'll even go back to dancing. Wow. I'll bring it out again. I would bro. love that. I would one love mad that. music video, one mad song, just the two of us for fun. I'll, I'll do- can I do the shmoney dance that you taught me? <laughs> I'm not sure about him. I'm not sure. Oh, it's because I'm white. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Shot. <laughs> I'm not Check sure the racism, him. white boy. I'm not sure about him. <laughs> we will discuss after. Does he know my spoken word? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think so. Did he hear at the school? No. He yes, did, yes, yes. He was split that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Done, 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 yeah. I remember we that. Can I do remember. a little bit of spoken word there. Maybe you can do the intro of the track. Yeah, yeah. definitely. You can say, "Yo, <laughs> he be the kid and Blake the champ." <laughs> something sure. like that. But Th- I, thanks. I do think, um, yeah, rap is maybe something that I do want to get into. Mm. I'm still trying to figure myself out because I feel like music. Some people try to rush it and they don't try to actually learn the fundamentals of music. For sure. So I think maybe, maybe soon enough, you guys will hear a track from me, and then afterwards a track of me and Blake. So that's a few things that I'm working on right now. Yes. Three practical tools. I think that as you become successful, mm-hmm. you sort of develop skills in areas that you didn't throw light on before. Yeah. No? So this is a two-part question. The first one was you have 100k subs that you're aiming for now and yeah. you one five away. So guys, let's run the numbers. Let's get that one five sorted. Then you mm-hmm. hit the 100k. Now another question. A personal goal that you currently have, something that you'd like to work on. I think I just want to become a better partner, bro, and a better father. That's beautiful. Do you know what I mean? I think that's something that I do, and I think that we still deal with struggles every single day. Mm. So that's something that I battle with, and that's something that I want to get back at, uh, get better at. That is definitely it. And um, yeah, that that's a sweet and simple answer. I don't want to get into too much detail. But, but I think that's what I think that's what will keep you becoming more and more successful in your career as well mm-hmm. because not everybody's willing to work on themselves mm-hmm. yeah not everybody's got that um that courage to look within and say hey this is the stuff i need to work on yeah. this is the stuff i need to improve and if you want to become successful in your job and your career you got to become successful as a person first yeah and and and, and people need to be willing to go deep within themselves and 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 own some hard stuff mm-hmm. and, and work I, through it and i think definitely i had this quote on my wall when i was when i stay back home of Kylian Mbappe where he said like um, my mom always told me in order to be a great footballer you need to be above all a great man so sure. I think that applies to every wow. single career like you need to be the best man that you can be in order to be the best at what you do wow. so yeah I think being introspective is very important yeah. and that will allow me to elevate my career like you say and just to be better with people in general as well love it being better as people I mean that's what the show is about at the end of the day mm-hmm. we are to catch up with you but also just to share and drop the knowledge so that people can grow in their own lives so what would you say um, are three practical tools? What are three skills that really work for you at the moment? Like for myself, I've improved a lot with my patience, my time management, things like that. Things that might seem small, but uh, are actually massive giants in your life. Mm-hmm. What do you think are three skills that work for you or three practical tools you can share? I think discipline. Discipline is a, is a big one, big one because yeah. when everyone decides to go out on a Friday night and I choose to edit that YouTube video, I think that's important for me. And a lot of people say they want to give their all to something, but they don't actually give their all to something. So they, don't, they don't sacrifice for it. So I think discipline is a big one. Consistency is something that I'm a big advocate for. I feel like um, doing something every single day. Like when I started YouTube, editing one YouTube video looked like a mountain, bro. Mm. But now that I'm in the on the hamster wheel, like it just becomes easier. Like when you, when, when you start going to the gym, bro, if you go to the gym for four days, bro, yeah. you're locked in. For sure. But if you think about going to gym once a week and that one time looks just so daunting, bro. Yeah. But I feel like when you're in the rhythm of something and you're consistent with something, it becomes a lot easier to do. Can I spit on that quickly? Yeah. So it's a quote that I love by, that uh, I've come up with myself, I would say, is in life there are no shortcuts. Mm-hmm. The shortcut in life is actually learning to take the long road really well. Yeah. And that's that's what you found, you Definitely. know. In the beginning, it was a long, long road mm-hmm. and you've turned it into a shortcut now. And now it just feels like it's just happening so quick and one last one i would probably say probably love bro Mm. love bro i feel like 
I've caught myself in a lot of situations where I have something negative to say about the next person in my industry. Like, yo, he's getting all the work. I'm mm. not getting all the work. But I think like when I stepped back and I showed a lot of love and I appreciated how far he's come or how far she's come or how far, how hard she's worked to get that, it's allowed me to not to worry about them and just focus on myself. So I feel like when you show love, it benefits you in ways you, in which you don't even imagine. Like I didn't even think that it would help me in my personal life. But when I stopped focusing on the next person and spreading hate to the next person, it's allowed me to show so much love to myself and to them and to elevate my career even more. Got you. Do you believe in karma? Karma? Yeah. So and reap, I believe. I believe that um, uh, you plant and whatever you plant grows. And I, and I think choices. I think every choice we make has a, has a every action has a reaction, uh, good or bad. So um yeah that's just that's just life eh Yeah I think so and Reap is probably the best one especially being someone that places his life with the bible I would say that um so yeah so and Reap definitely but I don't think things come back in the way in which we expect it mm. like uh, me smacking someone we don't go on violence it's not going to mean I'm going to get smacked tomorrow I might have a different um repercussion for that so I do think that karma is a big thing yes it comes back in a way that's meant for you also. Yeah. So you can learn the lesson. Definitely. I get that, yeah. And, and, I, and I was talking about this and as we come to land, I was talking about this. Your favorite quote that we shared on the school tour really resonated with me. If you mm-hmm. could just share it again and we can just briefly talk about that, um, that would be really cool. So my favorite quote is, um, not my, I wouldn't say my favorite, but I would say some, someone that, a uh, quote that sticks with me, is a quote that says, um, don't think that it can't happen to you, but you can come back from everything. Sure. From anything and everything like what that actually means is like i always used to look when i was younger like there were so much negative things hap- negative things happening and i was like yo that can't happen to me no way i'm i made it it's not gonna happen to me but those things did happen to me but what i learned from that was that even though those things happen i was able to bounce back from that yes sir so everything negative that happens to you um even though you you believe in your mind now i'm too good for this to happen to me it will happen to you yeah. and it can happen to you but it doesn't mean that you can't bounce back from it. And I think that's it. I think so many people watching that are going to be watching this podcast, we know that humanity is going through so much hardship, negativity, hurt, and they're unable to navigate it in a healthy way. And something that I'm taking away from this today is that we can turn our negativity into light. Yeah. Yeah. There's always a choice. Mm-hmm. It's like you can't say that this is never going to happen to you, but if it does, you still have a choice if you're going to rise above it, learn from it, become a greater version of yourself and still achieve your dream. So no matter where you are right now, if you're in a dark space, you can turn that into light. We, we're hearing it today. So we just want to encourage you guys really that no matter where you are right now, no matter what you're going through, if you find yourself in a situation that you thought you would never be in, there is hope. You can choose to rise above it and you can go for your dreams. 100%, bro, when you said that, that actually triggered something with me. Mm-hmm. And uh, not like in a traumatic way, or but it's actually such a humbling experience to go through that. Because yeah. my entire life I was a dancer, as you will know. And I kept fit, of course. So after the, the journey now, say 2018, <laughs> 2019, yeah. I started uh, making food. Mm-hmm. Before that, there's always takeouts and whatever. And, you know, you, you spend most of the time in the studio, so you're doing cardio the whole day. He even made a chicken poiki in Hawaii. It was brilliant. Oh. 100%. Are we? You went to Hawaii? Mad experience. Yeah, yeah. both went to Hawaii and Los Angeles. You guys can send me, please. Yeah, you can come with next time. Oh, but you guys are going to pay for my flight. Yeah, right? for sure. sure. Wow, I'd love to be there. <laughs> went to the Lakers game as well, bro. LeBron James. <laughs> the man behind the camera said he'll come and hold the camera for us. No? Nice. He's paying <laughs> for his own one, ticket, though. <laughs> <laughs> so what I was saying is, with uh, making food, I fell in love with making food. I realized how much I love food during that time what happened was I started picking up a lot of weight yeah, and I stopped looking like myself and it goes on for a long time. That's something that I never thought would happen to me. I used to have a strong opinion about people who are overweight, yeah, we'll, we'll, thinking that mm-hmm. they're unhealthy or that it's their fault. Mm-hmm. Then I learned how easy it is to actually pick up weight, to yeah. eat liquor, to be comfortable, to it's normal, but yeah. it's, it's quick and you get, uh, when, you, when you're out of shape, you pick up weight a lot quicker than it is the opposite lose to weight, lose it. Yeah. Yeah. And the comeback now is since the beginning of the year, you know, I just decided to change everything and knock that discipline again and go, look here, this is who I am as a person. And now having lost a lot of weight and starting to look like myself again, it's crazy what it does for you, bro, and how important it is to know that you actually have the power. Mm -hmm. You're the person who is holding the tool in your hand to change your life at any given time. It just comes down to you having the courage to just make the decision and start now. Stop saying tomorrow. Stop making excuses. Stop 
Just do it right now. Do it for yourself because you only live one life and you know what? You deserve it. You deserve all the opportunities, mm-hmm. all the success. Go fetch it. Yeah. That's true. Random question on the spot. If you could be any gibbet, what would you be and why? Yo, what gibbet would I be, bro? Yo, I don't even have my gibbets on. Now. He's putting me on the spot. Let me see yours, you like, can, please. You can make up a gibbet. Oh, anyone? Yeah. yeah. No, but there's some, some ones that I like, though. There's gibbets behind you? Yo, I would like to be a minion, actually. A minion? Yeah. Why? Because they're yellow. Nice. It's your favorite color. I mean, no, but I... <laughs> <laughs> they speak their own language. Yeah, they speak their own language, and minions seem like just unbothered. Dude, and yeah. they are hard workers, yeah. and they're smart. Mm. So I definitely want to be a minion. <laughs> nice, bro. Love it. That's dope. Bro, we just want to close off today and say thank you for your time. Thank you for Thank you for me, your guys. presence. Appreciate thank you, for being you bro. You. Yeah. Thank you for your dreams, bro. It's mm-hmm. because of your dreams that other people are inspired. So keep dreaming big, keep accomplishing, and we support you all the way. I appreciate bro. appreciate you, bro. Thank you for having me. Much love. Much love. Much respect, brother. Cheers, bro. Keep changing Cheers. nappies, eh? <laughs> guys, thank you so much for tuning in. I want you guys to like, subscribe, turn on that notification so you don't miss the next episode. And we'll see you next time. Comment below who you want to see on the show next. You know, comment below what you thought of the episode as well. And we're running a super cool social media competition with Crocs as well. We're going to choose three winners to win a free pair of Crocs and some gibbets as well. Very simple. All you have to do is just reshare a clip of this on Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, whatever. Comment. Make a noise about it and tag us in on Instagram and TikTok. It's simple. At inspire.equip.everyday and myself at Blake the Champ. We'll see you guys at the next episode. Cheers.